Okay, I have had a very long day working. Having woken up at 2.30, I think we're almost at a full moon. This is sort of middle of May and I'm one of those people that just sleeps five hours so I have to find a lot to do with my time. So from 2.30 till 7.30 I can write my book. That's another story. And then I can get up and go swimming and come back and get on with my work. But honestly, and it's been such a great day, and it has rained almost in long, thin strands of water. It's been horrible. It hasn't even been like raindrops. So today, I went over um, across the estuary and did a little bit of beachcombing. And I'll show you what I do with the things that I find. Because, you know, I wanted to show you how I make rings using ever such simple things. I would like to be able to do them in silver and gold, but this whole purpose of this uh, series of YouTube videos is to make it as simply and as cheaply as possible to try not to exclude anyone if possible. So first of all, um, that experiment that I did with the um, air dried clay and the case mite has worked a treat. Here we go, I'll show you. Lots and lots of things there. I tried it on um, on little um, coloured things as well to see how it worked. It worked okay. I've tried it on um, these are let's catch the light brooches that are on one of the um, videos. Um, it's worked perfectly on the rings and. I can do a little experiment and show you the sound that it makes. Um, here you go. This is air dried clay without case mite. It's quite a dull sound. This is air dried clay with case mite. Pitch. It's all in the pitch. So um, I'm really pleased. Now, if I just move that out of the way, I could. Um, show you what I've been doing next. I like to use Modrock as my base around the, um, you know, I wrap it around a yoghurt pot because it's about the same width of, of an average hand. Um, and I, I ran out of Modrock but I found this stuff and it looks similar, you know, it's a gauze with plaster of Paris on. And I tried it and it's taking ages to dry. So I just put it into the microwave and left it there for four minutes. And it's kind of okay, but ugh, not really. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak it in case might overnight and put it somewhere warm, not in the microwave. And so I'm going to do an experiment now. I'm going to make a ring, show you how I do it. It's very, very simple. This one I made earlier, that was with a little, um, there. Um, this is just a little piece of beautiful old blue and white ware from the Thames and an incredibly basic silver plated, white, white metal basically silver plated ring base. So first one, I'll do it with Milliput. And Milliput is this stuff, it's white super fine one. It's uh, it's very very nice and it's an epoxy moulding paste and it's rather heavy. So let me see now, let's um, get a pair of scissors. I usually just put it at the same level and cut it off like that. That way <clears throat> if you haven't found a knife, which I can't see one on the table here. So two bits of milliput. One's harder than the other one, so I start, start the harder one off first of all, just kind of, you know, roll it into little balls and push it over, roll it again, push it over. Do the same with the other one. Get them warm and softer, and then bring them together like that, and roll them together for a few minutes. Well, not even a few minutes, just a few seconds, until um, you can feel it heating up as the catalyst begins to play into it. Yes, now it's starting to warm up and get softer. 
So, what I will do, I'll halve it, roll it into a ball, and just start to do that with it. Now that's my piece, so it's got to be big enough to go around that, so basically it's a, it's a sort of long triangle. So, place it on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the edges like that all the way around so it's like like that and if I'd thought this through I would have put a knife where I could get one I just found a Stanley blade that'll do okay so make sure that that's kind of in and then what I do is Cut the corners off like so. Watch that again. See what I'm doing? I'm just cutting the corners off. And then I'm going to slide the blade along the top. Now the fact that it's not perfectly neat is ideal for me because I don't like it terribly neat. So it's now like that. And taking the ring, I will put it, put the ring into the middle. Now this has got a ring with a circular fitting on the back, like that. Ooh, that doesn't show up very well. And what I do is I push the milliput over the edge of the circumference of that circle so that it's completely make sure it's straight. Okay. So it's basically like that. And then what I do is I just dip it in some water. So it makes it a lot easier to smooth down. along the edges and if necessary I will um, bring the blade again just across the edge just to make sure it's sort of like that. So now I'm going to make one in um, same process but in air dried clay so I'll leave that to dry there and I'll make one in air dried clay and then tomorrow uh, when it's dried out I will soak it in the casemite again and then be able to compare the two because milliput is brilliant uh, but it's quite pricey and it is quite heavy and of course you have to be able to go and get it and it's really nice if you can make it from scratch and papier mache you can make with loo paper, corn flour, PVA and um, a few other things, I can't remember what they are. Anyhow, or you can buy it. I, th I think you can use basically white, lightweight Fimo too. Um, is that it? Am I up to date with myself? Yeah, I think so. And I'll hopefully wait for this thing to start to dry out a bit more. If only it was sunny. Or if only I had a huge big drying cabinet. I suppose I could sit for half an hour with a hairdryer. I'm not going to do that. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, toodaloo. Bye.